Flipland, it's Leela here for this week's comic book reviews from the Comic Connection, and we're going to get started with Batman Doc Savage special one shot. Uh, this is written by Brian Azzarello with art by Phil Noto, and in this one, Batman and Doc Savage cross paths during a murder investigation. So, not a lot seems to happen in this book. I mean, it serves more as a, an advert or a jumping off point for an upcoming Azzarello and Morales project called First Wave which promises to unveil a whole new DC universe. So I guess from that point of view, it was kind of interesting. Um, but other than that, it was kind of disappointing. And I, and I really like Brian Azzarello, so that was a little, you know, weird. Um, but if you're interested in the whole first wave thing, there's a lot of cool stuff in the back about the characters that are going to be in it and little write-ups about them. So if you're interested in that whole thing, definitely worthwhile to pick up for that little back section. Next up, we've got Sword, number one, written by Kieran Gillen and art by Steven Sanders. And this one, we get some insight into the inner workings of Sword, which stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department. Uh, so Abigail Brand is sort of the commander of the station, um, but Norman Osborn has sent his own little pawn up there to co-commander and basically undermine her in every way seemingly possible. Um, so basically, a brush with an alien invasion keeps her busy, uh, while Garrich, who is Norman's pawn, addresses the Peak Council and unveils his plan for repatriation. Uh, I kind of like this story. It was a little, fa it was fast-paced and laced with sarcasm and wit, which I enjoy. Um, I can only say that I hate the way that Beast is drawn, though. Like, if they hadn't have referred to him by name, I wouldn't have known it was Beast. It's that terrible. Uh, but other than that, it was a pretty good story. I really enjoyed it. So if you like something with sort of an alien flavor and that's got, you know, more about Nom Norman Osborn being Norman Osborn, trying to control the world even more, then this is definitely a book to pick up for you. And last, and um, maybe least, is Punisher Max number one. This is written by Jason Aaron and the art is by Steve Dillon. And in this one, the mob bosses get together to discuss what their joint problem is, which is Frank Castle taking them all out from top to bottom and destroying their business. So they decide to hire a specialist to kill him, but it's going to take a while to get to that point. So they decide that they need to have a plan so that they all survive. Uh, so they decide to make up a fake box boss of bosses, who will be known as the Kingpin. And, uh, and he'll hopefully, while Frank is chasing that lead down, their assassin will, you know, catch up with him before he catches up with all of them. But the appearance of a certain character makes that whole coincidence, that whole kingpin thing kind of interesting. Um, so this book was only okay. Um, if you like lots of violence, then it's, you know, it's a Punisher book. So it, it'll be what you expect. But I didn't really like sort of the art style, per se. And... While the story was sort of interesting, you can sort of see the point coming way ahead of time. And, you know, I just really like the original Punisher Max series, so I'm not sure how this one is going to do. But if you're a Punisher fan, I'm sure it won't disappoint. Hey folks, Jim here with this week's comic book reviews. First up, Sky Doll, Doll Factory, number one, written by Alessandro Barbucci and Barbara Canepa, with art by Barbara Canepa. And this one, uh, it's basically produced as a collector's album filled with drafts, sketches, roughs, research material, and an all-new 10-page tale uh, detailing Noah's creation. Um, as always, I love Kanepa's art. I love Barbucci's writing. Simply fantastic in every possible way. If you are not reading this book or this series, what's wrong with you people? It's a great series, great art, great story. I cannot highly recommend it enough, and be sure to look out for the uh, alternative cover that I was not sent. Boo, Marvel. Uh, next up, Casper and the Spectrals, number one, written by Todd DeZago, with art by Pedro Delgado. And in this one, there's a city within New York City that mortals cannot see, known as Spooky Town. And when an ancient evil known as Valbrag threatens both worlds, it's up to Casper, Wendy, and Hot Stuff to stop him. Um, I wasn't expecting to like this book because, well, no one really likes the Harvey characters, but I love the reinvention. It actually works for this day and age. Uh, the characters' redesigns are quite nice, the art and story are pretty damn good, and I cannot recommend it, but it's not bad for kids. So if you have kids, check this one out. It might be for them. Next up, Modern Warfare 2, Ghost, number one, writ written by David Lapham with art by Kevin West. 
And this one, it focuses on a Task Force 141 soldier known as Ghost. We learn the motivations behind his mask, and we follow him from the United Kingdom to Afghanistan and beyond. Um, really violent story. I remember reading stuff that David Latham did like 10, 15 years ago when he was just a no-name guy, but uh, he's quite uh, progressed from there. Um, not a bad story. Beautiful art. Um, it's not a bad book. I actually quite enjoyed it, and I'm not a Modern Warfare 2 fan. Uh, if you're a fan of the game, you're probably going to enjoy this, because it'll give you a little detail on some of your favorite characters. Next up, Transformers Continuum. Uh, now this one's by various artists and various writers, and basically covers the entire continuity of the IDW Transformers universe. Um, leading up to next week's horrible looking Transformers ongoing series. Um, now, the bad thing about this book is that it doesn't actually make sense. <laughs> Pretty much like most of the IDW stories anyway. But it's not bad, the art is nice to look at, but if you're looking for something that details every single step of the process of the story leading up to next week's ongoing series, this unfortunately will not help. And last, and most certainly least, is Brian Lynch's final issue of Angel. We're free! Free! <laughs> sorry, Brian, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's written by Brian Lynch with art by Stephen Mooney. And once again, I thought Uru's art was bad, but Stephen Mooney takes it to a whole other badass level. And, and in this one, Angel and Spike are thrown into an all-new kind of hell as they battle at the comic convention, and then things get hairy. Well, furry, actually. Yeah, there's furries and stuff in this book, and it's pretty damn funny. Um, the thing about Brian's writing is it got better as it went along. I really do respect him, but I just didn't like his writing very much. Uh, he was quite good. Not great, but quite good. Um, so I'll be really more interested to see what Bill Willingham has up his sleeve, and uh, it should be pretty good. We'll see you next week.